On this edition of Small Town Big Deal, we travel to the low country of South Carolina to celebrate a special group of people with a culture and a language all their own. Una dia, the day dia. They may sound foreign, but they've been here since the earliest days of slavery in America. It's been passed down with us for about seven generations. We learn about the art, the cuisine, and the amazing history of Gala. Next. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. And we are in Beaufort, South Carolina, in an area they affectionately call the Low Country. We're here to celebrate a very unique culture that only exists along the sea islands of the southeastern coast. It's called Gullah, and it has survived here for centuries. This is the annual Gullah Festival, held along Beaufort's scenic inland waterway. The waterway separates the town from the surrounding barrier islands, such as St. Helena and Hunting Island. There are about 80 of these sea islands that are considered to be where the story of Gullah, also called Geechee, began. Gullah identifies a language, a culture, and a group of people who are descendants primarily of West Africans who were brought to this country during the 17 and 1800s to produce cash crops, indigo, cotton, and rice. Add to that some influence of white enslavers and even some Native Americans from this area, and the uniqueness of Gullah Geechee was born. So Gullah Geechee really becomes the epitome of multiculturalism 101. We family whether we want to be. We can for whether we want to be. Boom, read it Boom, read it That mixture of diverse influences can be seen and very much heard among the Gullah people. We're una dea, the day ain't dea. And we're una ain't dea, the day ain't dea. Okay. Tell me what you said. What is that? When una dea, when you are here, the day ain't dea, the deer as in Bambi, is not here. And when Una ain't there, when you're not here, the dare, dare, the dare is here. Unu is an African word, West African word for you. Now on St. Helena Island, we say Una. How Una do? I do good. Ron Days was born on St. Helena Island. He has become a noted author and historian of the Gullah culture and language. For years, it was stated that people who spoke Gullah were ignorant, low intelligence, but it took great skill to form this speech way that everyone could understand. Why has Gullah survived all this time and, and Gullah Geechee really seems to be thriving? Well, there are a few reasons. These coastal communities, they're surrounded by waterways. The bridges connecting many of these coastal islands weren't constructed until the 1900s. They were kind of isolated. Yes. In addition to isolation, something else had an impact. Cotton and rice were the main sea island crops at the time. Rice workers had a bit of an advantage that allowed them at least some free time. Every able-bodied person was given a task. If they finished the task before the allotted time, they could return to slave village and they could engage in cultural practices, sweet grass basket making, or just the sharing of folklore. The sweet grass baskets. Arguably, no other item is more synonymous with the Gullah culture. These handmade baskets have evolved from agricultural and household items to works of art, and tourists pay top dollar for them. Michael Smalls is a well-known basket artist. He has agreed to try to teach us a few of the basics. So Michael, you have given each of us a starter. Yes, we could make at least hundreds of different styles of basket out of that just one starter. You both have tools. 
right? That's your nail bone. Okay. So that's the gullet term for that tool. Okay. What you actually do is you take your nail bone and go to the next stitch. So we're sewing, not weaving. Okay. okay. And he just picked right up on it. He was watching you ahead of time. And oh, I that's, that's what it cheap. was. Yeah. What is this particular thing called? It's palmetto fronds from your cabbage palm tree. Okay. It's a state tree. And then these are? Sweet grass. S that's sweet grass. When they were brought and placed on the plantations, they searched for something that was similar to what they used in Africa. And the spartina grass is what they found. And because of the aroma, they named it the sweet grass. The technique of the Gullah Sweet Basket was actually brought from Sierra Leone. I was taught at the age of seven by my great-grandmother. Oh my goodness. So we're trying to keep the tradition going. Michael and his business partner, Dino Badger, love sharing the craft and teach classes in schools throughout the state. They told us even with all the modern technology available today, school children still love to just sit and sew and create. And hopefully better than us. I must say, you, you took that one. <laughs> yeah! Woo! She coached him. <laughs> I did not! Wait, Dino. Yes, ma'am. Definitely I got more loose. She got you. Did not. He, so it's a tie. He just winged at me. One to one. Yeah. Dino is a great judge of good basket weaving. Coming up next, will our gala cooking be better than our basket making? You be the judge. Wherever you cook, you got to taste it and be able to feel it. If you're sparing in right, stay away from the pot. Welcome back to the Gullah Festival in Beaufort, South Carolina. You know when they say, I love you from the bottom of my heart, that ain't enough for me. No festival is complete without great food, and there's plenty here. From barbecue ribs to smoked collard greens, all cooked up Gullah style. And on nearby St. Helena Island, we find a man who cooks up fresh Gullah grub all year round. The most important ingredients in this style of cooking is the spirit, because wherever you cook, you got to taste it and be able to feel it and got to be able to see it. If you're sparing in right, stay away from the pot. Wise words from Gullah food expert Bill Green. He says even we can learn to make a traditional red rice. This red rice is one of the oldest style dish around Carolina and three or four days out of the week in the Gullah people diet. So wait, you're saying this is easy, but I see a lot of ingredients. A lot of spices, I know. Yeah. That's right. The Gullah people, we never really measure a lot of stuff. We do everything by pinch, pinch this and oh, pinch okay. that. And when you put it together, man, you know you got something. You got it, right. So the nickname for this type of stuff is smiling food. We can start off with the tomato sauce. Okay. Then you start with your water, lemon juice. Then you go with your salt. Yeah, I can yeah, stir. You can stir yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I love garlic. I love garlic. My mouth is already watering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want a little bit of ginger in it. Chili powder. Oh, okay. One of the key. Gala cookie is not bland. After the chili powder, there's sage, okay. followed by black pepper and red pepper. So when I use that many spices, it's usually to cover up some mistake I've made in the kitchen. For Bill, it is a science that creates culinary perfection. What this oil do is pull all of them spices together. So the oil helps blend all the flavors, okay. This your light brown sugar. Anytime you're using a red sauce, this should keep it from biting at you. Keeps like, me from crying. Yeah, that red sauce will catch you <laughs> later on. When it catch you later on, you'll be in trouble. After the sauce boils for a few minutes on the stove, Bill has me stir it over a huge pan of raw rice. Then in the oven for 35 minutes. So Bill, what makes Gullah food Gullah food? You eat by the season. Whatever grow that time of the year, or whatever you catch out the creek, or catch out of the woods. That's when you have it. Cooking in season is the Gullah way, and so is sharing what you cook or harvest. I think that we are healing our community by the food that we are producing. But my mother and her friends will go out at night and fish. They will come back in the morning. Everybody had to get out of bed. You had shrimp to separate. Everybody in that community are family members. So Miss Hattie's here. She's gonna get this a little bit. Miss Joan here. Mrs. Liza here. So everybody's got their little bag because she came back with a bountiful amount of fish. That spirit of serving others is still an important part of the Gullah culture. 
Today, more than 650 plates of chicken, beans, and of course, red rice will be given away. Nutritious, smiling food to people in need. The program is just part of a nonprofit Syrah began almost 20 years ago, the Marshview Community Organic Farm. Sarai invited us to her family farm that her great-great-grandpa bought in 1865. We got a chance to see her inspire the next generation of farmers. That means 56 days for your plant to germinate. I started growing vegetables on the farm and then the students came and wanted to help me on the farm so they started growing vegetables along with me and then we just spread that out into the community. The farm's purpose is to equip young people to be stewards of the land and future leaders in the Gullah community. Together, they learn about growing crops as well as self-sufficiency. Combining the two, I said, Bill, would you mind doing a cooking class for us? And he said, sure, I was wondering if you were gonna ask me. So teaching the kids how to cook added to that layer of yeah. learning how to grow and how to get along with each other and working together and then they can go home and teach somebody else. Her outreach is growing faster than her plants. It's some tomatoes. Ooh, we have some flowers. Children receive a box filled with everything they need to start their own garden at home. Yeah, don't take it all the way up here and cover all the leaves. All this is supported by donations and grants. They also have the Gullah Grub restaurant providing income. Five days a week, locals and tourists come to sample authentic Gullah cuisine cooked up by Bill and his students. And I can vouch for the shrimp. It's awesome. I'm hoping so is our red rice. Man, I want you to taste it. Okay. One thing you got to learn about this style of cooking, and you don't really know exactly what really entertain. You take your third bite. The first bite will open you up and start make you thinking. By the time you hit that third bite, oh. That's good, Bill. Oh, yeah. And when you hit the forward bite, bam, my <laughs> dog. You know what I taste? Uh-huh. Love. All right, that's what you're supposed to taste. <laughs> Love, you got to have that in you. When we come back, an actor and an artist share the Gullah tradition in their own beautiful ways. This is the first time the collard greens began to be more than just collard greens. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal and the historic Gullah Festival in Beaufort, South Carolina. There's lots to see and do here, but the locals will tell you, if you want to be entertained, go see Aunt Pearly Sue. Aunt Pearly Sue is the stage name of Anita Prather, a local actor, singer, and storyteller. She and her theater troupe, the Gullah Kinfolk, use performing arts to tell Gullah history. Slavery took its best shot at us as a people to destroy our identity, to destroy our dignity, to destroy our family structure, all of that. And I think Gullah is the trophy that tells them that they didn't win. This year's play features the incredible true story of Robert Smalls. He was born into slavery in Beaufort and later taken to Charleston, and at the outbreak of the Civil War was forced to work on the Confederate ship called the Planter. One night, while the rebel sailors were ashore, Smalls and his men commandeered the ship and sailed straight into the Union blockade outside the harbor. That is until the soldiers at Fort Sumter realized what was happening and opened fire. Robert was so skilled, right up against the wall of Fort Sumter. He brought that boat in so close that the cannons went over his head. If he'd have bumped that side, we would have had black bean soup in Charleston. <laughs> Once in open water, Small surrendered the planter to the Union Navy. And when that young captain stepped on board, he was able to tell him, please present this as a gift, early Christmas gift to President Abe Lincoln. In one day, Robert Smalls bravely became the first black hero of the Civil War. He later became a U.S. Senator and remains to this day an inspiration to the Gullah people as well as others for his valor. We don't get the opportunity to make excuses. Inequality, racism, biases, prejudice, doesn't matter because we still thrive and not just survive. And that's what Gullah says. For years, it was a matter of assimilation. It was thought, you should rid yourself 
of all those things that don't define you definitively as American. Right. But all those are cultures from heritages that make up the American story. So if Ron looks a little familiar to you, it might be because, like in my household, we watched him on Gullah Gullah Island on Nick Jr. Gullah Gullah Island was overwhelmingly well received. College students would recognize and come and speak to us and wanted us to know that they skipped classes <laughs> when the show was on. Gullah Gullah Island featured not only Ron, but also his wife Natalie and their children. Many of the story elements were borrowed from their real lives. Gullah Geechee children who had not been taught to be proud of who they were were coming up and saying, I'm Gullah, I'm Geechee. The show was geared mostly for preschool children, and starring with the Days family was a dancing, singing tadpole named Binya Binya Pollywog. Binya itself is a Gullah word. Someone who has Binya or been here is known as a Binya, so I'm a Binya. Now those who relocate, they will be called Kamya, because they have Kamya or come here. Natalie is a Kamya. She's originally from New York, but for years she's been interpreting Gullah traditions through her art. One Gullah staple has found a prominent and beautiful place in Natalie's paintings. The very first color green painting I actually did was, was the one here, a self-portrait with collards and they became wings and headdresses and dresses and they just kept evolving. Bright African clothing and collard greens are Natalie's inspired way of paying homage to her adopted community. She may be Kamya, but her respect for Gullah culture is as strong as any Binya we found. Those colors are a perfect reflection of everyone we've met in the Gullah community. They confront the darkness of slavery and at the same time, honor and celebrate their culture and turn it into a very bright future. I tell folks all the time, I'm a size two, the rest of this is thick skin. <laughs> you know, you got to give people permission to offend you. And that's the message we have to get to our young people, mm -hmm. that we are not victims of enslavement, we are victors over it. And Gullah proves that. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We are in the low country of South Carolina, where the sea islands provide breathtaking views. And Dattaw Island is one of those. Dattaw helped make this episode on Gullah history and the festival possible. The moment Jan and I crossed the bridge, we could see the careful planning to preserve the natural beauty of this private community. A wide range of homes sit under moss-draped oaks along coastal creeks and back up to two award-winning golf courses. You know, Jen and I love to compete. With golf, tennis, and so many other sports, we're tempted to never leave. And as much as I love to fish, Dattaw's Marina is calling my name for great boating and fishing. The fitness center has an indoor pool, art center, and spa services. Live an active life in Dattaw. Rodney, what are you doing? I think I found my favorite place here on Dattaw Island. A place for peaceful meditation. Well, actually, the rest of all the fun I'm gonna have tomorrow. Dinner at the clubhouse first? Why not? For more information on Dattaw Island, go to dattaw.com. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. You know, there are so many heartwarming and wonderful stories in America. I don't think we are ever going to run out. I got to say, I really enjoyed learning about the Gullah culture. I love the art, the music, and definitely the spicy rice. That's good, Bill. Oh, yeah. I think my favorite part was listening to Aunt Pearly Sue tell her stories. Like she says, we all come from various ancestors and cultures. So in a way, we're all just a little bit Gullah. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Just because you're a man doesn't mean you're not creative and artistic. And 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 you know men's kind of catch on to things a little. Watch it. She came back with a bountiful amount of fish. Mm. She yeah. must be a lot Watch better it. fisherman than we are. <laughs> <laughs>